How's it going everyone? In this video, we're gonna be going over five different super helpful Photoshop tips for toy photography. So over the years of editing my toy photos in Adobe Photoshop, I've kind of figured out a few things that have been very, very helpful that some things might be duh, and you might have already figured these out, or they might be like, whoa, cool, that's really helpful, but they're super helpful for toy photography specifically. If you are not an Adobe Photoshop user, do not fret. I have a whole entire editing toy photography playlist on the channel with all kinds of different videos, including phone tutorials, apps, all kinds of free software. You can edit your toy photos there. And I'm gonna get right into them. So number one is gonna be about cropping perfectly for Instagram. Okay, so every time I take a photo, I really do try hard to make sure there's plenty of space on the top and the bottom for when I put it on Instagram, because Instagram is gonna crop the top and the bottom. The longest size photo you can post on Instagram is a four by five size, which is uh, pretty long, but it's not as long as what your camera is gonna put out right from the start. So when you take your picture, you gotta kinda make sure that you know like, okay, Instagram is gonna crop this when I try to post it. What you can do on Photoshop if you find yourself with a picture that's too long to crop. So here we go, I took this picture a while ago and there's stuff going on on the top and the bottom and it's too long to crop. So if I'm gonna go into Photoshop, go over to the left hand side here with the crop tool, I can change the ratio to four by five. Usually this will be perfect, but I'm gonna crop out the lightsaber and some of my hand. I want all of that. So we're gonna take this side, move it all the way to the top. This side, move it all the way to the top. And so we have now cropped it larger than it actually is, but now we have these two borders. What the heck are we gonna do with these two borders? Well, I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna take the square selection tool and I'm gonna draw a square over on this side, okay? And if I hold shift, I'm gonna draw another square on the other side. Okay, now we have both sides selected. Now we're gonna go to the content aware fill. Yeah. Edit content aware fill. And that's going to take all the info from the image and try to fill in these spaces based on what's over there. And if you look over on the left hand side here, this is the preview. It's already extended our photo for us pretty much. I'm gonna hit okay. And so look, now the photo is just wider. It's just wider, that's all. So uh, there's a couple things that I could fix here. So if you look over here, it kind of took my watermark and messed with that a little bit. So I could either just highlight this and do the same thing, edit content aware fill, hit okay. And there we go, it's all set. And the only other thing here, it did make my arm a little bit wonky here. So I'm gonna take this new tool here called the uh, Spot Healer, or sorry, it's the uh, Remove Tool. It's a brand new tool on Photoshop. I'm just gonna go like this, and that should fix it. Close enough. And so now my photo is perfectly cropped for Instagram. It's got the right size, and I didn't cut anything off. So this is so incredibly helpful. This is definitely why it's number one on this list of top five editing tips. So there's that. Okay, this next thing is a really handy tool that Photoshop has in there, and it's called the Sky Replacement Tool. So I use this pretty often whenever I have the sky in my background, and it's very plain and white. So, so often when you take a photo, the background is very plain and white. Your, your sky is at least, and if you want to add a nice blue, beautiful sky, Photoshop has that option. So this is a photo I took way long ago. This was back in, uh, 2018, I think this was from. All I have to do is go to edit and go to the sky replacement tool right here. And so it's going to automatically read where the sky is and put a sky back there. So yeah, obviously that looks really fake, but it's on the right track. So it gives you a lot of options over here on how the sky should look. So it gives you all these options. I'm actually going to, I'm gonna keep this sky that they've got right there and I'm gonna turn the brightness way up. Uh, maybe the temperature up a little bit and then i'm also going to make this make this scale a lot bigger and so i can also just move it around however i want you can go through and make this thing look perfect for your photo so just hit okay when you're done 
and now you've got a good looking blue sky which hey if you do not like that that's fine if you do that's great uh, it works really great in a lot of photos so all of these photos that I'm shuffling through here right now are all fake sky I totally put them in there fake because it was just plain white before and uh, I think it really added to the brightness and the vibrance of the photo the sky replacement tool is awesome so awesome okay so the next tip in this video is going to be speckles yes just speckles yes this is just a nice little touch I add whenever I'm doing some type of particle effect. I won't use this completely as my particle effect, but when I do use it, it adds to an already existing particle effect. So this is a cool Kylo Ren photo I took um, back in like 2020. And so if we go to the brush tool over here, over here, and then go to the top where you can choose your brush and scroll down all the way to the bottom. So actually let's make this bigger so you can see all the way to the bottom. See these little paint splatter brushes? These should automatically be in your Photoshop. You don't have to download them or anything. You can go online and find lots of free brushes or even make your own, but I'm just gonna use the ones that already come with it because that's easier. And I'm gonna make the size a little bigger. And so if I scroll in right here and just see how I'm adding little speckles here. They're little speckles. So uh, if I want to add them into this photo to kind of complement what's already going on, I'm going to create a new layer just so I'm not uh, drawing on my existing uh, photo here. So control shift N will start a new layer, name it speckles. And so now I can just add little bits of speckles here, smaller or bigger. And it's not going to make a huge difference, but I think it is going to add a little bit of extra stuff going on here and there we go so it's very subtle but they did add a little bit of speckle here and so all of these photos that I'm cycling through here right now are all ones I've used that speckles and you can see little bits here and on this photo you can see little bits over here where I've used the speckles just enough and it adds a lot. And also it's, it's great for an, uh, a lightsaber when you're adding it to uh, add a little bit of particle effect, just an extra little bit of effect there. That's the next one. The speckles are, are nice. It's very, very nice. Okay, so the next one's a good one. We're gonna do with the lens flare effect. Yes, yes, lens flares. <laughs> okay, so we're back at the same photo with Kylo Ren. This lens flare effect will only really work if you've already got really bright things going on in your photo. If your photo is pretty dark and you add the lens flare, it's going to look really fake. It's going to look really fake. Uh, we've already got a very bright, bright background going on. So we're going to utilize that for our thing. Usually I will use them if I'm trying to make a, a bright sky look even cooler with that lens flare effect. Or even if I'm making a, some armor shine or a lightsaber shine. So let's so first I'm, I'm going to duplicate this layer just in case I need to make any changes. So control J and then filter render lens flare. There we go. So if you look over here on this small little thing, there's a little lens flare that I'm able to move around. So that's pretty cool. If I stick it right behind Kylo like that, that might look cool. It's, it's in the sky, so it's already in a place where, like if I were to put it right in the center, that's going to look weird. Why is there light lens flare coming from there? But if I put it right here in the sky, it'll kind of blend better. So let's hit OK. And that looks really cool. Just that looks, that looks so much more cinematic, in my opinion. But see these little big pieces of bokeh here? I don't necessarily love those. They kind of make it look very fake. So if you want, you can leave those in, but I'm just gonna erase it. So since I made that extra copy, see, uh, I'm going to just take my eraser tool and get rid of it a little bit. And there we go. That looks good. So now we have a lens flare. All right, looking good. So uh, what if I wanted to add a little shine like right on top of Kylo's head just to get another little shine here so go to filter render lens flare and let's move it down to this type of lens flare because I like the way this one looks and I'm gonna make it really small and I'm gonna try to click it right on the tippy top of his head there 
and hit OK. Um, and if I look at it, see that's a little bit off. So I'm going to go back, get rid of it, and move it up a little bit. Render, lens flare. Looks cool. That looks good. That's a nice little shine there. See, we've already got a pretty cool difference. So I also want to add a little bit on his lightsaber too, because I think that'll that'll look really good. So uh, let's go to filter, render, lens flare, right on his lightsaber, right near the ignition. And there we go. Now that's got a little shine too. It's not a whole lot, but it is enough. And there we go. Now we've got some cool lens flares going on. So this is before, which looks great. And this is after. So, all right, not bad at all. Not bad at all. That's how you do lens flares. Okay, so now we have one other tip left in the video, and this is to try and blur the background even more. If you really wanted to get that super, your subject to super pop and blur the background even more than you've already got it. Uh, so this one is another photo from 29 or 2020, I think. I like this photo. And uh, I wanna make this background, it's already pretty blurry, but I'd like to blur it even more. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is select the subject because we don't wanna blur the subject out. So over here, there's actually a subject selection tool. And it's really great. See, so look, if you hover over, uh, your subject is selected for you, for the most part. And there it goes. Okay, so I've got this whole tough clone trooper highlighted. So I'm going to copy and paste him. Control C, Control V. So now we've got an extra layer of just him. Look at him. Now, what we're gonna do, so I'm actually gonna remove him from the photo. So then I can just blur the background. I'm gonna highlight him again, but I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do it in a rough way because it doesn't really matter so much. We do edit content aware fill, and we're gonna erase him. There he goes. Bye bye. See ya. So it doesn't look perfect back there because that's all right. We still got him in the separate layer, so now he's totally gone. Pretty cool. Now to blur the background, I can just blur it however I want. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blur the foreground here with uh, the battle droids so much. So I'm just gonna take my tool and just kind of do this a little bit and draw the background. Okay, so we've got that highlighted. Let's go to filter blur, and then there's a bunch of ones that would work. Gaussian blur would work, but I'm gonna use lens blur because uh, I feel like that's trying to imitate a real camera. So uh, right now it's at 60%, so I could blur it at 100. That's very blurry. I could blur it at 38, 45. Let's just try 50%. And okay, build D. And so that background is even more blurry than it was. So this is what it looked like initially. And this is what it looks like now. Yeah, it's very subtle. But, you know, you could do this in uh, a photo with all kinds of stuff going on in the background, and it would really, would really work a lot. Okay, those are my top five things that I can recommend and tips, whatever, in Adobe Photoshop. I hope they're helpful. I have a couple more that I'm going to start writing down so I can make another top five video. If you have any other tips like this that you'd like me to add in that you see that I'm doing, I will do that in the next video like this, and hopefully it remains helpful. Uh, for you guys and thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy it please 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 drop a quick like and i do have an entire editing playlist of all the uh editing videos that i've created so definitely make sure to check that out as well so cool thank you again see you in the next video